Prime Minister Lee Hsien Lung has ordered a probe into last night's violence at Little India, the first street riot here in over 40 years. In a strongly worded statement, he said it was a very serious incident and that there is no excuse for such violent and criminal behaviour. <laughs> The Committee of Inquiry will look into the factors that led to the incident and how it was handled on the ground. It was sparked by a fatal traffic accident and preliminary investigations revealed new details about the Indian national who was killed. It appears that the construction worker was drunk and had in fact been kicked off the bus that subsequently hit him. Nearly 40 people were injured in the ensuing violence. Police enforcement in Little India will be stepped up in the wake of the incident. PM Lee added that the riot was an isolated incident arising from the unlawful actions of an unruly mob reacting to a fatal traffic accident. And he says the incident must not be allowed to tarnish views of the foreign worker community here. President Tony Tan King Yam Tu says Singaporeans should not let a single incident such as this undermine their confidence in our society. Well, this weekend, there will be a complete ban on the sale and consumption of alcohol where the riot took place in Little India. Second Home Affairs Minister S. Iswaran says this is a temporary measure to stabilise the situation on the ground. It will give the police time to assess the situation, engage stakeholders and then decide on the appropriate next steps to be taken. Mr. Iswaran was speaking to reporters this evening in Little India, where he met retailers. He said the police will implement the ban and communicate to all the stakeholders in the affected area. Asked if stricter rules on alcohol could have helped to avert the riot, Mr. Iswaran said this needs to be thoroughly investigated before a conclusion is made. But he added that it is plausible that alcohol consumption was a contributing factor. And earlier, Transport Minister Lui Tuck Yu said he is looking at ways to tighten access to liquor in Little India. He said the riot was a very, very serious incident and a reminder not to take peace and tranquility for granted. The day after the riot at Little India, Member of Parliament for Momin Kalang GRC Lui Tuck Yu visited residents and business owners to reassure them. The area comes under the GRC's purview. And following the riot, Mr. Louis says he's considering a limit on the number of liquor licenses in the area, the amount of alcohol sold, where it can be consumed, and the hours during which it can be consumed. He added it's important to understand why the workers behaved the way they did, but that this will take time. I don't want to... to cast this as a you know foreign worker versus us situation or uh, you know try and overlay a racial uh, tone to it because I don't believe that that is the case so far. He was also asked if there was any indication that the riot was fueled by alcohol but emphasized that it's hard to say definitively why the situation turned out this way. When I came down to Race Course Road last night and I was able to pass some of those who had been uh, taken under police custody, I think uh, in my mind it was quite evident and smelling you know, the, the, the environment that uh, alcohol could have been a contributory factor. He added that beer bottles and beer cans were among items used to damage vehicles in the riot. Business owners and residents say it's not uncommon for minor alcohol-related disturbances to break out on weekends. But some feel the authorities should shift their focus to the area's traffic situation and find solutions to prevent congestion, which can lead to fatal accidents. Sunday's riot was sparked by a fatal traffic accident. Police officers and the town council worked through the night to clear the streets of the damaged vehicles and other debris. With almost all the signs of yesterday's turmoil and violence cleaned up, it's business as usual for many of the business owners here along Racecourse Road. Still, some were hit much harder than others. Workers at this fruit and vegetables stall had a lot to clean up after their produce was destroyed during the riot. Hello. Hello. Nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. How much do you think this like loss was a loss? I know we don't know. Then uh, normally we will calculate. Then uh, then only you know. The riot may be over, but for some retailers, their work's only just begun. 
At a media briefing this evening, police said the Indian national who died after being hit by a private bus at Racecourse Road had been causing trouble on the bus before the accident. The bus driver, a 55-year-old Singaporean Chinese, has been arrested for causing death by a negligent act and is out on bail. According to the police, 33-year-old construction worker Saktivil Kumaravelu was intoxicated and had boarded the private bus, which was believed to be ferrying foreign workers to the Avery Lodge dormitory in Jalan Papan. The bus driver asked for assistance from a 38-year-old Singaporean woman who was responsible for checking the arrival and departure times of the buses. He asked her for help to get Saktivil off the bus as he was causing trouble. She managed to get Saktivil off the bus and the bus driver subsequently closed the door before moving off. Police say the driver heard a loud bang on the left side of his bus as he was making a left turn onto Racecourse Road. Upon alighting to check, the bus driver found Saktivil underneath the bus. Police say two officers arrived at the scene at about 9.40 p.m., 17 minutes after a call was made reporting the accident. They found that a crowd of about 100 men had surrounded the scene but were not yet aggressive. Singapore civil defence officers tried to extricate Saktivil from underneath the bus, but their efforts were hindered by the crowd that had by now become boisterous. By the time they managed to recover Saktivil's body at about 10 p.m., the crowd had started assaulting the bus driver and the timekeeper by throwing bottles and dustbins at the bus. Officers managed to get the two to safety, and they were taken to Tantok Singh Hospital. The police said according to standard protocol, two troops of Special Operations Command officers were deployed to manage the crowd, which had by now grown to about 400. They arrived at 10.30 p.m., but due to congestion on the streets, had to go to the location on foot. Police say they're interviewing many more men from the various dormitories and will likely make more arrests in the coming days. Of the 27 arrested, 24 are Indian nationals, two are Bangladeshi nationals and one is a Singaporean permanent resident. Some of the rioters are expected to be charged in court on Tuesday for rioting and vandalism. Police say they're determining their deployment of officers at Little India this weekend. Meanwhile, Channel News Asia understands that the police started conducting their investigations at Avery Lodge before 5 a.m. today. Now, the workers I spoke with here today at Avery Lodge, about 50 to 60 of them have said they have no first-hand knowledge of what transpired on Sunday night, with many of them saying they were back at their dorms by 4.30 p.m. on that same day. But that, however, has not stopped the police from carrying out their investigations. Investigation officers were seen leaving the lodge this morning and police officers were seen checking workers' permits. Later in the evening, some workers at the lodge were led away by the police. Well, as you heard earlier, the riot was sparked by a fatal accident at the junction of Racecourse Road and Hampshire Road. Police say the riot broke out shortly after, involving a crowd of about 400 people. Pictures on social media showed a bus being attacked by people, although you can see at least one man in a checked shirt who was apparently trying to stop rioters from attacking the bus. The commander of Tanglin Police Division appeared on Channel News Asia's Talking Point this evening and he explained to us how the situation nevertheless escalated. When the congregation of people started to, to throw uh, projectiles at the SEDF officers, the police officers who saw it retrieved the shields and went in basically to create, to try and create some working space for these people because they had to bring in the hydraulic equipment to check up the bus in order to extricate the body. It seems that the moment the police had resorted to using the shield to protect themselves, that somehow angered them. The crowd also attacked police vehicles that were sent to the scene. The rioters flipped three police cars on their sides and attacked the vehicles with sticks and bars. They also set fire to five vehicles, an ambulance, three police cars and a motorcycle. The flames were later put out, leaving the burnt-out shells. Police say the situation was brought under control within an hour.
Second Home Affairs Minister S. Iswaran says that while the perpetrators of the Little India riot will be brought to justice, the majority of foreign workers have been law-abiding and should be treated fairly. Mr. Iswaran was speaking on a special episode of Talking Point on Channel News Asia this evening. He stressed that the other important thing is for Singaporeans to remain calm and not give in to speculation and rumours. I think we need to be fair because, as I've said, I think foreign workers, there's a many of them in our midst and some of them have committed some offences but by and large they've been law-abiding so we will bring the perpetrators to justice but we must treat the larger law-abiding group fairly and without any misgivings and xenophobia Earlier, we told you Minister S. Iswaran announced a temporary ban on alcohol in that part of Little India where the riot took place. Well, business owners we spoke to there say they hope it will not be permanent. Then. Mostly the Saturday, Sunday only main business. They mean uh, more than 20% we are affected. The if you ban, ban oh, Saturday, okay. Sunday, we willing to approve. This thing, government give, give us back you know, the rental money and uh, the uh, license money. Yesterday incident, uh, not cause of drinking. It because uh, the accident happened. I believe I'm be here for 50 years. I don't see this type of incident. At the moment, the recession is no good, uh, no business. So I hope stick to the same, but don't give too many uh, new licensing. Just carry on. It's actually it's the first time they're doing it. So we also it's a very clueless for us also how it's going to be, but. For international guests who's come to the restaurant, I don't know what they're going to say. While issues like the sale of alcohol can be addressed more quickly, one observer says the root causes may be the bigger challenge to tackle going forward. You're having essentially, for the first time, we're beginning to see problems that have been seen elsewhere in Dubai. And Dubai has reacted it to it like a police state, just completely clamping down on them and making them live in absolute ghettos on their own. The problem we have now is an underclass. It, no doubt it's, it's a permanent but transient underclass. It's a permanent underclass of low-cost foreign workers who would move on, of course, after a few years, but it's permanent in terms of its size. Well, the Migrant Workers Centre says its first concern over the Little India riot lies with the victim who died after being run over by the bus. MWC says it's in touch with Saktivyal Kumaravelu's employer, scaffolding company Heng Hap Sun, to ensure that all necessary support is provided. And it's trying to reach the man's family. MWC says last night's incident shows the importance of outreach to all foreign workers to ensure a harmonious coexistence and it will be stepping up its efforts in the engagement process. It will also do its part to provide legal assistance and emotional support to affected workers. We must realize that this is a group of workers come from different culture and background. It is important for us to continue to engage them, share with them, and let them understand our social norm. If they have any issues at the workplace or if they face any problem, please don't take matters in your own hand. Please come to us and we will give you all necessary support and assistance. Now, negative comments made their rounds on the internet even before the riot was contained, but many other voices are calling for restraint. It's quite scary. That actually such a thing could happen in Singapore. As events exploded in Little India late on Sunday night, questions and comments simultaneously flooded the online space. First reactions were shock, disbelief and confusion. But soon, negativity and racism reared their heads and they did not go unnoticed. Many others spoke up against what they called stupid xenophobic remarks. Acting Manpower Minister Tan Chuan Jin was the first office holder to call for calm online, and others, including the Prime Minister, soon followed. One day on, Little India returns to a semblance of normalcy, but the incident has triggered a wave of different responses from Singaporeans. <laughs> I don't think it was very unexpected because uh, the foreign workers will tend to congregate in certain areas of Singapore. They are underpaid, the workers are underpaid, so obviously they will have a lot of aggrievements and um, you know, it might not actually push them 
that quick, but I think it's been going on for a very long time. Don't think that because all these Indian workers, they come here to work and they create problems. It's not a... But I believe that everybody here feel upset when their loved one or their own people being knocked out by a car. Early Monday morning, this Facebook page sprang up, calling on Singaporeans to stamp out racism, and it's steadily gathering likes. Another story is also making rounds. Netizens are cheering this video of a man in the checkered shirt, seen here in the heat of the incident, trying to stop angry rioters. And do tune in to our sister network, Channel News Asia, for more in-depth coverage of the Little India riot.